everyone welcome to big oggy's world and kelly's kitchen so today is just me and you i'm afraid just the two of us because john is in bed with a migraine and he does get them quite well not quite often but when he gets them he does get them bad so we are on our lonesome unfortunately the weather outside is absolutely awful and although you won't see this sort of anytime soon it is actually the first of may tomorrow and the weather in cornwall has been absolute pants so it's thick fog out there you can't see over the back wall it's wet it's damp which means my pain is up sky high and combined with john's migraine we're not doing very well today so i needed something quick to prepare that could feed the family that everybody will eat and no faffing around so i have found a recipe in the sainsbury's magazine um, this is the april one so this is about the coronation and stuff because that's coming up in a, just over a week and it's a chicken ham and leek pie but it's a phyllo pie so i'm not faffing around making pastry and all that malarkey no 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 not today Today we're going for quick and simple, but delicious at the same time. So, according to the recipe, you can use one of those um, round casserole dishes, you know, like the um, cast iron ones. There are, you know, brand names, but we won't brand them anyway. And you can make it all in that if you want. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna prepare it on the hob and transfer it into my pie dish. I just think it will just be easier for me. Plus the fact, you know what I'm like guys, I don't like paying over the odds for stuff. And the recipe said chicken thighs, but fillets, the thigh fillets. And I'm not joking, they're like over twice the price just because somebody's taken the skin and the bone off. So I bought my own chicken thighs, I thought I'll skin them and bone them myself, which I did. And unfortunately my ingredients have come up 100 grams short. So I'm a little bit short on my chicken, but I have got plenty of ham and we've got plenty of leeks and stuff and peas. So I'll bulk it out with that. And like I said, it's gonna go into a smaller um, pie dish, so it'll be absolutely fine. So let's get going. Start off with, on a high heat, you need about a tablespoon of olive oil. You don't have to be too precise with this, but, but get some heat into it and then you are going to take your chicken thighs which will have been cut into two centimeter um, pieces and we're going to brown them in the frying pan and then set them aside now again you're going to have to probably do this in two batches because we don't want to overcrowd the pan and create a lot of steam and water in the pan that's not nice so um, take your time, do it in two batches or even three if you have to and um, put it in a bowl or on a plate ready for the next stage. So I'll crack on and do that and um, we'll see how we get on. Now remember the problem with searing on a high heat is spit so be careful. I'm going to have to try and get one of those pan guards, you know, that's a splatter guard or something to sort of try and protect me a bit, but um, I quite often get spat out. This recipe has got either cider or wine in it. You only need 100 mils. So I'm using um, Cornish Orchard's cider. But because you only need 100 mils, there's a good amount left for the cook. Come on, you can't waste it, so cooks benefits and all that. Cheers. Top tip for searing as well is don't stack around with it too much. Leave it to actually brown before you turn it, otherwise you're sort of doubling over your time because you're going back and redoing it. So you can lift it to check it, but just don't keep turning it. Okay, so next step, we need to lower our pan down to a medium low heat. And in the fat that we've cooked the chicken in, 
we are going to add our leeks. So they've been cut nice and chunky. You don't want them too fine, otherwise they'll just disintegrate. So in the leeks go. You need to add some seasoning, a little bit of salt, and some pepper. a bit of a stir around to start them off so that they're sort of a bit covered in the greasy um, chicken -y juices and stuff. And then you're going to add about 50 mils of your stock. So just sort of a little dash, really. You don't want to add too much, just to create a little bit of steam. There we go. Cover your leeks and leave them for about three minutes or so until they start to soften. Now at this point, if you haven't already, take your phyllo out of the fridge because otherwise it will be too cold to handle. Uh, phyllo is a tricky one to handle because it, if it dries out, it gets very snappy very quickly. Um, the other thing that you have to remember with phyllo is it always, always needs oiling of some description. The recipe actually says to brush it with olive oil I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use melted butter because I just think it gives it a better taste. But, you know, you do what you want to do. If you want to use butter, fine. If you want to use oil, that's entirely up to you. You don't need it just yet. You just need to set it aside so that it sort of comes up to room temperature so it's easier to handle. It makes a bit of a stir around. cover them and let them do their thing. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, there's our leeks. So, they're just going nicely soft. So the next step is to increase the heat again, slightly, you don't want it raging hot like it was when you first cooked your chicken. You are going to add your chicken and all the juices back to the pan, like so. Give it a little bit of a stir in. Okay, then you need to add your cider and you need to let it bubble quite vigorously for a minute or two just to burn off the raw, raw alcohol. Now, obviously, if you don't want to put alcohol in this, you can just add an extra 100 mils of stock in and that would be absolutely fine. Or you could actually, instead of the cider, you could put 100 mils of apple juice in if you would like to do that. But whichever way it goes, you do not have to put alcohol in if you do not want to. Okay, so that's bubbled quite nicely now. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to reduce the heat down again. And then I'm going to add the rest of the stock. Remember, we put a small amount in with the um, leeks to get them going. So in goes the rest of the stock. Then you're going to take your corn flour, there's 25 grams of corn flour in here and I've mixed it with a small amount of water to make a slurry. Um, once this is bubbling up as it's just about to start, okay so now, now that it's bubbling I'm going to add in my corn flour. I'm 
going to stir this in and mix it around and this is going to thicken our sauce. There we go. So that's bubbled down nicely and it's nice and thick. It's not too thick, but it's not, you know, running either. So that's great. And the next thing we do is take it off the heat. There we go. So off the heat that goes. Move that out of the way. And then into there we are going to add the rest of our ingredients so in goes our ham now i've cut my ham this is just sliced ham but it's smoked so it will give you a nice taste i've just bought a packet and i've cut it nice and chunky because i don't want funny little bits i want people to be able to see exactly what they're eating so in goes the ham Try and mix that around a bit. Now if you've got leftovers from like, I don't know, a Christmas ham or even a coronation ham or whatever, but you know, like a joint of ham, then by all means cut it into chunks and add that in. It'd be a great way to use up your leftovers. But try and make sure that it's smoked because you just want that little extra bit of flavor. Then into that, we're gonna add our frozen peas. I'm using petit pois because that's what I like, but you can use any garden peas, or actually um, fresh peas won't be that far away now, so you can even buy fresh peas and pop them yourself and use them. And go the peas, oops, missed a bit. In goes the thyme. I'm using thyme, but you will see in the ingredients that John puts at the bottom, as he always does. You can use tarragon if you like. Um, tarragon would work really well. I just don't like tarragon. I'm not keen on that aniseed taste. So um, thyme is a great alternative if you don't like tarragon. Okay, and give it a good mix in. And then you're going to add your creme fraiche. And then goes that. Whoops. Stir that through too. I'm just going to check for seasoning. Need salt. We will give it a twist of pepper. hanging around is some um, um, freeze-dried parsley. So I'm gonna put just a few bits of that in, because why not? Parsley goes with anything, so. Right, there we go. And that is your pie filling. So let's get this all out of the way. Get our pie dish over and transfer the filling into there. Goodness me, this pan's heavy. Now 
Now, I'm going to clear down and then we will do the pastry top. Okay, so as you can hear, we have now put the oven on. You need to preheat, preheat your oven to 170 fan, 190 if you don't have a fan, and it's gas mark 5. So, phyllo pastry. Each pack of phyllo has usually got about seven sheets to it. We're only going to need around about five. So, let's get some scissors. comes out on a little piece of board and then you can just unwrap it hopefully this is why you need to take it out of the fridge so that it's not freezing cold I feel those quite large sheets there we go so if you're using olive oil great I have melted some butter and I'm going to use butter so to start off with you need to find the middle of your sheet which is quite easy because you can see the crease in it and then paint half of the sheet with whatever you're using whether it be butter or whether it is olive oil Try and make sure you get all of it, but don't sort of drain it in oil because you don't want the top of your pie to be horrible greasy. Okay, so once you've done half, this is going to make an awful mess. Take the other end of your piece, and I'm sure this is, it is two pieces. So delicate phyllo. And fold it in half over the piece that you've already painted. Then paint the, over the top of that again. Like so. And then take your piece of pastry and sort of just put it over the top of your pie really don't need to worry about it being crinkly or going over the edge because that's all part and parcel of the loveliness that is a phyllo pie your pastry is going to be lovely and crisp there's no heavy laden you know short crust or or even puff i guess you could do it with a puff lid if you really wanted to but like i said today for me this is just speed but still something that i've prepared you're going to use about five sheets like i said obviously if you've got a bigger pie dish or if you've doubled up your filling or whatever then you're going to need to adjust accordingly but I think four or five sheets for us will be absolutely fine when you put it on your pie overlap it so that the pie is sort of filled if you like you know it's got pastry over it I'll come back when I've done the rest. So as you can see the pie is now finished. There is no rhyme or reason for phyllo pastry. You just scrunch it in and make it look sort of rustic really. So that is going to produce a lovely buttery crisp crust. Not like I said it's not going to be dense like short crust or, or even um, flaky pastry. That's why I put butter on because I think it'll taste nicer but if you like olive oil that's absolutely fine if you want to um, sprinkle it with some sesame seeds or some such you can do that by all means um, I'm not doing that because I've got fussy children I know 
um, and this is going to go into the oven like I said 170 fan 190 if not gas mark 5 for 30 minutes when you bring it out let the pie sit for five to ten minutes just for everything to sort of simmer back down and then you'll be able to cut through the crispy crust and it will be wonderful so i hope you've enjoyed it like i said this was a quick and easy pie that i'm going to feed my kids tonight because the weather's rubbish i don't know where people are saying they're having barbecues and stuff this weekend because really cornwall's dreadful so i don't know what's happening there um like i said John's got migraine, I'm aching all over. So this was simple, nutritious, cheap food for our family for tea. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. If you have, thank you very much. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. Stick something in the comments if you're gonna try it or if you've tried something similar or if you have any comments about using phyllo and that sort of thing, that would be amazing. Really good to hear from you. Um, if you're on Facebook, Join us on our Facebook page, Big Oggy World. It's a public page, you can just go and add yourself. And there's usually someone over there talking about something or another or sharing a recipe or saying what they're having for their dinner. And that's what I like. I like to know what you're having for your dinner. So what are you having for your dinner tonight? We are having this pie with Jersey Royal baby potatoes and some green beans. So thank you all again for joining me and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now.